Welcome to the AFR Saints channel, where we provide you daily content on your favorite team, the New Orleans Saints. Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to leave your comments below and smash that like button. Who that? You think Derek Carr is just fake an injury so he can get the sympathy vote? Yes or no? I, I do not know. Paula, you think Derek Carr is just fake an injury so he can get the sympathy vote? No. I don't know, man. I can make a compelling case. <laughs> like on Sunday when he's sandwiched on the turf by Bruce Irvin, he's entered in the concussion protocol, is not moving his arm for the second time in a month. We've seen this now from Derek Carr. And also, we're told he has rib injuries. That's Sunday. 72 hours later, our friend Bur uh, Brooke Kirchhofer from New Orleans.Football tweets, Derek Carr looked just fine in practice today. Made every throw when we were out there. Even sprinted across the field. He did not participate in team stretch. Pete Werner was back. Taysom Hill, Malcolm Roach, Cam Irving were not in practice. I'll get to the full injury report here in just a quick second. But, I mean, dude sprained his AC joint which I've never sprained my AC joint. I'm not a professional quarterback, but all indications are, I know Drew Brees talked about this. It's one of the most painful things that you could have as a quarterback is a sprained AC joint to your throwing shoulder. Derek Carr didn't miss a game. Now he's got that thing busted up again. He's still out there at practice. Crazy. Part of me respects it. Part of me wonders, Muse. Maybe, just maybe. Her car is just, uh, ah, just rolling around getting the sympathy vote. I think there's other other better ways to get get sympathy vote maybe than than faking injuries. I, I don't think he's doing that. I don't like in wedding crashers. I mean, Jeremy just kept staying down. Hey, yeah. And then remember, yeah. John was like, "Hey, just trying to get the sympathy vote. You down again? Get up. Get up. Get up. I don't know. Um. Okay, the injury list is. This is the longest this has been all year for New Orleans. So going into a game against Carolina where you're going to be favored against the worst team in the NFL to see this. Look at this injury report. Can you pull this up, Paul? It, just, it takes up the whole damn screen. All right, here's your DNPs. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven DNPs. Uh, it's did not practice. Isaiah Foskey, which we know. Taysom Hill has a foot and left hand injury. Cam Jordan didn't practice with the ankle injury. Marcus May was out. Kendra Miller was out. Malcolm Roach was out. Rashid Shahid, who didn't play this last week, was out. Limited. Derek Carr, Jimmy Graham, Jawan Johnson, Eric McCoy, Andrews Pete, Ryan Ramchick, Pete Werner. And uh, Blake Groupie, listed with a right groin injury, was a full participant. So your quarterback, your entire offensive line, and half your defense all didn't practice today. Not a great recipe when you're trying to get your season back on track against the worst team in the NFL. Um, it is also worth noting um, that Dennis Allen told reporters Derek Carr is still in the concussion protocol, so I'm not making light of that. Please understand. Trying to, trying to bring some degree of levity to an all-around awful situation for the New Orleans Saints, but Derek Carr is in concussion protocol, and... Um, There is is even worse news that Malcolm Roach and Marcus May went to uh, went to IR, so they'll miss at least four games, um, and with five to play, it, it's a safe assumption that Marcus May, Malcolm Roach, their seasons could be over. Now, the Saints were awarded linebacker Monty Rice on waivers, and they signed D uh, defensive tackle PJ Mustafer as well. Today, so that's your um, there's your your roster updates for the New Orleans Saints. You know, we'll we'll wait and see how this injury report looks as we get closer to Sunday. And and by the way, I guess I should mention the the Panthers injury report as well. I I mean the, the Saints injury report took up the whole screen, but the the Panthers are dealing with their own um, significant injury list as well. Uh, Troy Hill. Taylor Moten, Adam Thielen, Deshaun Williams all did not practice. Long list of, of limited participants. Von Bell, center Bradley Bozeman. Center Bradley Bozeman. Keep an eye on that one. Uh, safety Jeremy Chin. Uh, outside linebacker, Yatir Gross Matos, Marquise Haynes, J.C. Horn was limited with the hamstring. 
Hayden Hurst still limited with a concussion. Stephon Sullivan limited with a shoulder. Tommy Tremble limited with a hip. Uh, Amari Barno, the outside linebacker, was a full participant listed with an ankle injury. So anyway, my point is, by the time you get this deep into the season, you're into December, and you play 12 games, everybody's hurt. Everybody has has injuries, bumps, bruises, scrapes, it breaks, it's just strains, pains. It's the, the nature of the NFL. But the Saints had largely avoided a really deep injury list until the past couple of weeks. And it's coming at what is really the worst time for the New Orleans Saints. Of the greatest significance, obviously, Marcus May goes to IR. Uh, Pete Werner did not practice uh, and didn't play this this past week. I'm sorry, he, he was limited. Pete Werner was limited. Um, Malcolm Roach is done for the year, so or, presumably he's on IR. But that that's going to hurt your defensive line depth. Cam Jordan uh, didn't practice today. He's battling through the ankle injury. Uh, you you understand that you have a defense that isn't playing up to its standard, and half of its starters are hurt right now. And on the offense, look at the Eric McCoy, Andrews Pete, Ryan Ramchick, all on the so three fifths of your starting offensive line, your quarterback two of your best receivers, I mean, it's just when you're looking for the ball to bounce your way for something to go right, it feels like the opposite forces are at work right now against the New Orleans Saints. Now, that's been the case for Carolina all year. They're the worst team in the league. They're 1-11. and um, And my God, if the, Saints, if the Saints lose to Carolina, and a lot of you have, <clears throat> have excuse me, mentioned this on the text line today, and you're right. Like, you, if you lose to Carolina... I don't know how you come back from that. Carolina's 1-11. They're 0-7 away from home. The Saints are a five-point home favorite, which the fact that the line is so short against a 1-11 football team and you're at home starts to tell you the story of the lack of confidence in the New Orleans Saints. But this is one where the Saints have not won a game since they beat the Bears at home with a Tyson Bajant. Um Bajant or Bajant? Bajant? Bajant. I think it's Bajant. Everybody said Bajant during the Maybe week in the Bajant. game. Bajant, Bajant. I'm going to go with Taylor Bajant. Does, I mean, does it really matter? No, no it doesn't. Yeah. That's the point. Yeah. That's the point. Um, But the Saints haven't won since they beat the Bears in the Dome. And with the Saints now losing and the Falcons winning this past week, being a full game behind Atlanta in the standings, and then not having the tiebreakers while well, you're effectively two games back. I never like to say must win until it is a literal must win. Like if you don't win the game, then your goals are taken away. Like if you don't win the game, you can't win the division. If you don't win the game, you're out of the playoffs. So it's not it's not a literal must win until it is. But this is about as close to a must win as you could possibly have. Because if you lose this game, then even if Atlanta loses this weekend, you're still a full game back. And then you fall another game back in the division tiebreaker because of your division record, uh, losing another division game. And then how do you really get off the mat if you lose to Carolina, a 1-11 team when you're looking for a get right? So without it being a literal must win, this feels like as close to a must win as you could have without it being a literal must win. So Chris Tabor, who is the interim uh, head coach right now for the Carolina Panthers after they fired Frank Reich just you know uh, halfway through his first season there in Carolina, um, he he met with reporters on Wednesday and kind of talked about the mindset of being an interim coach of a of a one in eleven football team coming to New Orleans this weekend. I would say this about them. I really do. I appreciate how we played on Sunday, even though we didn't get it done. And I know that that's frustrating for myself. That's frustrating for them. That's real. I, I have no problem acknowledging that. But at the same time, I think it's one of those things that, uh, like I said, you have two choices: character or compromise. And when I lay my head down and go to sleep at night. I like to think I know who I am. Did I, did I do an honest day's work? And that's how I think that's how you have to look at it. I really I don't think about the record. You know, uh, the record things way way past. I just think about what are we doing in order to set ourselves up to win. That's a good way to approach it. You're not going to turn I mean, you're 1 and 11. Your season's over. You're not going to the playoffs. You approach to a week to week. How do you get a win this week is kind of how they're looking. And you know, Tabor himself is an interesting guy and he's been a he's been a coach for 30 years. Started the high school ranks back in the up uh, in the early 1990s, and he finally broke through in the NFL back in uh, in 08 with the Chicago Bears, uh, coaching special teams. He's been with with the Bears, with the Browns, uh, and now with the Panthers. So three teams during his uh, his NFL career, and he's getting his opportunity as a guy who's mostly been a special teams coordinator throughout his career. But 
it's sort of the same thing that I, that I alluded to with the Saints. Find the guy on the staff that everybody respects. Find the guy that they're going to go play hard for, that they're going to rally behind. Who's, it's the same thing in Las Vegas with Antonio Pierce. Everyone in that locker room respects Antonio Pierce. I don't know that he's a great head coach. I mean, he's cutting his teeth, and we'll see how it goes. But put the guy in the front of the room that people respect, and apparently they have that with Chris Tabor. We'll see how long he's there. Um, but one more. He was asked, can you play number eight, please? He was asked about, of course, these two teams met in week two. It was Monday Night Football. It was Bryce Young's home opener. Just a dramatically different feel of the season back in week two as it is right now. But um, you know, Tabor was asked, you know, can, does, does that game tell you anything for, for now, or was it just too long ago considering the way both seasons have gone? It, it can help you maybe with regards to what possible matchups might look like. Uh, but at the same time, then I think you have to account for how the season's gone, where your player's at at that time versus where that player's at at, at the time. Just because maybe on a matchup you got the better of them in week two doesn't mean that whatever this is, week 14, that that's going to be the same. All right, Saints and Panthers, noon Sunday from the Dome. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.